Hey there, uh, Pete Throat with Scenes to TV, uh, here with Matt O'Kine, who just got off stage from the uh, Brisbane Comedy Festival Gala. I how did. did. How'd it go? It's good, man. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the room, I, you know, the prison town hall is one of those weird places where I've never really, I don't, you don't really know what goes inside it for a long time, yeah. like goes on inside. Like I, I grew up here, I was here for like 21 years of my life and, and I'd only ever been inside once and that was for my school formal. So mm. there's a, there's a, like an, 89% chance that, you know, someone in there was sitting in the same seat that I fingered someone in, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. It's pretty exciting sort of being back there in that moment. It sounds like your former was a lot more exciting than the last time I was here because I was here to see Jimmy Carr last time. Hey, you don't know what goes on in the Jimmy Carr <laughs> audience. Uh, people love comedy these days and a lot of people love Jimmy Carr. It's true. He's going to be, you know, he's... He's a good-looking man as well. Yeah. So I wouldn't blame anyone for uh, for indulging in in sex during a Jimmy Carr show. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, so you're here for, as part of the Brisbane Comedy Festival. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little about your show? What what it's titled? What it's about? I'm doing a heaps like sort of fun show this year, which sort of sounds stupid if you're talking about comedy, but like. <laughs> It's, it's like, because last year was like sort of like a breakup show. I'd just been through a breakup and it was sort of followed the sort of journey through that. And this one is a lot more like, it's not sort of bound to anything. It's just free form kind of uh, some sweet observational stuff, some really uh, solid story stuff. It, it's going to be heaps of fun. Also, I have to admit, something happened on the radio where I was talking about like a situation with my back to a to a listener a listener was has a talk calling in mm-hmm. and they're like oh fuck my sciatic nerve and i was like oh dude totally understand what you're talking about um the same thing happened to me last year uh every time i bent my neck forward my legs would start buzzing and then uh about five minutes after that i got a text from this random person who said oh hey matt or alex whoever just said that about their neck and the vibrations in their legs um that's got nothing to do with the sciatic nerve that's a really serious situation. You need to get checked out by a uh, neurologist. Oh. And um, please do not broadcast this message, but give me a call as soon as possible to sort of clarify what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So this is, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, I, you know, a song's playing, and so I call this guy up, and uh, or this person up, sorry, and uh, and I and I call him up, and I'm like, uh, you know, is uh, is like it was me what's going on and, and they said oh look i don't want to freak you out or anything but i you know i'm 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 a neurologist and i heard what you said and basically uh what you've described is a really common symptom for people with multiple sclerosis oh. so i really would highly suggest you come in here and do some testings and stuff and this is all while you know fucking see is playing in the background you're like <laughs> yeah. oh, oh good i might have ms yeah and we're gonna be back in 10 seconds all right cool thanks very much man uh hey you're on triple j you know and so it's uh it's like a pretty full-on sort of few months where you know i am denied about whether i even wanted to know about it and yeah you know you're sort of in denial sometimes and going testing and stuff like that and so yeah so I, I, the show covers that little journey i guess yeah um you know the ups and downs of figuring out whether you're okay and i guess all of the questions that you start asking about yourself yeah yeah uh, it sounds like a really sort of interesting launching point of a show actually. yeah well i mean it, it's definitely there it's all those sort of moments that you have you have a lot of time to think you know you, like when you're doing an mri for 30 minutes and you can you're not allowed to move yeah. you just you just think a lot and I mean, after immediately, because immediately all you think is, fuck, my nose is really itchy and I can't scratch it. <laughs> but then you think, hmm, I wonder if I'm being the best person I can be. Yeah. You know? So it's all that, it's all that sort of stuff. It's exploring all those questions. It's like, it's like you know, when you watch, uh, you know, it's like I watched a Facebook video the other day and next minute you're like, fuck, I think I need to be vegan. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. you're like, damn it, I should never have watched that because I, ignorance is so bliss. And now mm. that I know, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Every time I, I, I have a flat white, I'm going to think about cows on a rape rack. You know, it's like, I can't, <laughs> I, I, I can't, can I live with myself doing that sort of stuff? Yeah. And then you start thinking about it all. It's like, it drives you insane, you know? Uh, for me, it was a Rise Against video in high school and it was just like, I just wanted some punk rock and now i gotta like consider my whole dietary <laughs> yeah, situation yeah, yeah fully it's heavy right <laughs> yeah. it's heavy i guess the show encompasses a lot of those questions you ask about yourself are you being everything that you that you think you should be i guess and also it talks about two for one you know rolling pins at the uh 
like supermarket and yeah. buying barbecue chicken at 9 a.m. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it's not like it's not all deep. All right. <laughs> Just don't. I, I like going a little bit there and a little bit there. And uh, you uh, recently had a bit of uh, uh, you've had a very event filled week um, recently with the mm. the amazing race. Yeah, man. Uh, can you uh, fill in our listeners on what sort of uh, led to that? I know uh, it sort of started with a bit of a uh, a rivalry between you and Veronica and Lewis. No, it wasn't. See, that's the thing. You me, you say me. I have oh. nothing to fucking do with this thing. All right, <laughs> for God's sake, Alex Dice, my co-host, needs to shut his mouth on the radio sometimes because what goes down. Stays down, all right, and and it, like all of a sudden, next minute, he says something about Lewis. Lewis retorts. Me and Veronica get drawn into this and this whole shenanigans business. And Ollie Ward's our puppet master boss thinks he's so. Oh, he's just he was just licking his lips. <laughs> he's he's a sick man, and I hope he watches this. Okay, for everyone out there, Ollie Ward's is a sick, sick man. He loves getting us to do just. Just ridiculous. We had to give birth to two fake babies out of a fake body, which there's juices squirting out. We got to cut umbilical cords, and we got we got dock points because we didn't know how to to clamp the umbilical cord <laughs> above and below the cutting. <laughs> Who the fuck knows how to do that unless you've been to med school? Yet we got put in that situation. Is that fair? Is that fair, Ollie Woods? You're sick. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. That's all right. Yeah, don't. Worry. He's gonna have to sleep with his eyes open. That's for sure. Because I am. Oh, I am coming for him. So, who actually won between you guys? I didn't. I didn't catch mm. the conclusion. Bro, Brecky boys for life. We took yep. it out by miles. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, respect. B R E A. K K Y. I never. I never fully decided the spelling of Brecky boys. It's like it's like breath and breathe. Like I wanted to tweet about how I have bad breath because I'm a really really awesome tweeter. <laughs> uh, and I and I was like, mm, I got bad breath. And then I was like, wait. I looked at it, and I'm, I'm never sure whether it's breathe or breath. Is breathe is the one with the e on the end, right? Yeah, yeah. See, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> I I I um I have a mother as an English teacher, so I can oh. em- I can emphatically say it okay. does have an e at the end. Did you have a uh, Did you have like a little trick for that? Um, like a little trick for the n- remembering the e on the end? No, I'm just really good at English. Um, no, yeah, no, 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 pickle, uh, no, 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 pickle, man. <laughs> and every now and again, I just go, "Hey, mum, how do I spell this?" Okay. Ironically, though, my dad is probably the better speller out of my mum and dad. Okay. And dad teaches maths, so right, all the x's and y's. Yeah, probably. All the Pythagorean sort of setup. Um, I didn't do maths. <laughs> I studied a Bachelor of Fine Arts in acting. That's what I did. That's what I'm qualified to do. That's that's the only thing I'm qualified to do. <laughs> so anything that involves anything number related, like yeah. I still struggle telling the time on the radio every morning. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's difficult. Uh, speaking of uh, sort of radio and how that sort of relates to stand up, do you find it's um, harder to do morning radio when you've been uh, doing stand up for, for a while because you're out later and you have to get up fairly early? <laughs> I thought you were talking more about just the general. It can be difficult to do more morning radio oh, no. uh, after you've done stand up, mainly because in stand up there's a room full of people yeah. that usually laugh. In radio, you just say stuff and hope to God that someone is laughing out there. That's all you can do. You're just like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe a million people laughing. Maybe a million people are turning their radio to Nova. I don't know. Um, but in so terms Screw of, those people who turn it to Nova. I, I, I'll get in trouble for even talking about um, our friends at Nova. Support your taxpayer uh, funded yeah. institutions, people. Um, That's what no, we're saying. So being, being out late and... Um, and so, so being out late and... Doing the radio in the morning, you hit a you hit like that nice. You know when you have like a massive night out with your friends, mm. and then you wake up, and you have barely had enough sleep, and you are just delirious. That's that can be the prime spot. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, you're like you're driving to some sort of fast food thing, and you're just killing it. Just purely running You're just on adrenaline. riffing and it's great. None of it makes sense. That can be, and I mean mm. can be, the prime spot, the sweet spot. 
that real cherry on the bat. But you could also just sound like a tired fuckwit. So <laughs> you've got to fi- you got to figure out you got to it's a it's a fine line basically. Yeah, a bit of a balancing act. You don't want to. Well, as Alex Alex uh, was saying before to someone uh, like last last just last no not last week but uh, two days ago. The worst thing you can do is go out and like and have a really big late night and then do radio the next morning because you realize it can be done. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, that was fine. <laughs> Neck minute, you're just doing it all the time. <laughs> and it, you, you I mean, you're slowly dying a painful death, but yeah. you, you know, you get by. Sure, the radio shit, and you, you know, you, you, you're tired and you look like crap, but you get by. My name is Matt O'Kine, and uh, my show is called Matt O'Kine. Um, it should be called Do Not Broadcast This Message, but I didn't get the submission in, in time. <laughs> you should definitely make it. Support Brizzy, represent. He is Brisbane born and bred. Intro 4068, BSHS, <laughs> Taringa Rovers, yeah, Ironside Primary. You, yeah, you. Yeah.